how, how does a Kantian go about trying to pursue that highest good or goodwill? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that look like in today's day and age? Well, well, it would look like something like this. Uh, someone who takes this Kantian philosophy to heart uh, would ask themselves with regard to some course of action, uh, not primarily whether this course of action will result in me being happy, but whether it will be consistent with the worthiness to be happy. Because it's much more important to be worthy of happiness than to be happy. Uh, miserable, miserable person who is worthy of happiness is a much more beautiful thing than a happy person who's not worthy of the happiness. You know, you can't steal your way to happiness. Uh, that's cheating. Um, so that's something that the Kantian would ask themselves for sure. Like, uh, would this course of action uh, make me worthy of happiness? And like, I'm not preaching here, I'm not saying like that, that, that I abide by the Kantian philosophy, but it is the most beautiful philosophy that I am aware of. Like, and, and when I get the privilege to teach uh, Kant, for example, at the university, I'm, I'm preaching as much to myself, you know, because um, I, like Kant, also have this instinct to pursue my own happiness. Uh, absolutely, and to subordinate ethical maxims to my own selfish ends, absolutely, like I'm the first one to, to admit that. So that in thinking about the, you know, these sublime thoughts from Kant and so on, like uh, that, that provides me with an incentive to be a little bit less selfish and perhaps a bit more human. Excellent, I think that's a great point to end on. Thank you so much, that was awesome. fantastic, yeah, really appreciate welcome. it.